Hey everybody, welcome to the Waldock Way. I'm Jessica, and today's video is going to be a back to school haul. These back to school hauls are something that I have done annually for years. In case you're new here, I'm homeschooling an only child who is 12 as of a few days ago, and will be going into seventh grade for all intensive purposes. Um, we are very lucky in the sense that I actually create the majority of the curriculum that we use. So I like to spend more of my homeschool budget on things that are gonna bring fun, excitement and connection into our homeschool that normally looks like a lot of books and a lot of games. Um, and this year some extra school supplies too because we actually needed to replenish some of those. So I am just gonna get started because what you can't see just outside of the camera frame is that my dining room table is completely covered in stuff. So we are gonna start with the school supplies. Um, the first thing that I have are these big mechanical pencils. These are the 0.9 millimeter lead. What I love about them um, is that because of the lead is just a little bit larger than your typical 0.7, it really doesn't break. Like Emily uses these for her schoolwork. Me, Kevin, and my dad actually all use them when we're doing um, scores for archery because they are so convenient and the lead doesn't break. Um, so anyway, so I actually got two packs of these because we will go through them. Uh, we typically put two or three in our quiver for archery and then, like I said, Emily also uses them for school. Um, I also grabbed, I already dug into them. So I don't have them in the package. These Bic Gelosity pens, I got a pack of the black a little while ago and I really, really like them. I'm not sure that I will plan with them because I love being able to erase and these do not erase, but the colors make me happy. They again are a wider um, pen with a larger tip and they flow really nicely because they're gel and I really, really loved all the colors. I don't really know what I'm doing with them yet, but I thought it would be a fun thing to add to um, these caddies with all of our things in them so that Emily would have choices of different colors. Maybe we'll journal with them. We like to journal with color pens. Uh, and then speaking of erasable pens, I did pick up a new pack of my favorite, which are the Friction Fineliner Erasable Marker Pens. These kind of remind me of like the Papermate Flares, which we love, but I love that these erase, so they're perfect for planning. And then because I use the black more than anything, I also grabbed a 12 pack of just the black fine liner. So I have the colors that has one black and then a 12 pack of black as well. Some Expo markers, mine and Emily's favorite are the ultra fine tip, um, which are really actually not that easy to find in like stores. You almost have to order them, but it's a, the extra, extra fine. So not just your typical one with almost like a pin tip. These are our favorite. We do our um, magnetic family calendar on the fridge with them. Anything dry erase that she needs to do for school, she does with them. Um, she has a chore chart that she keeps. We use these for those as well. And then I also grabbed the Expo wet erase markers. Um, she uses these a lot for karate because they have like a, one of those dry erase sheets that she puts her stances and techniques in and she uses these to, you know, mark off the ones that she's learned. We use them as well for our calendar. Like I put the dates so I don't have to worry about them getting erased when I'm erasing other things. Meal planning, I do that on a kind of a laminated sheet that I use over and over. Love them for things that I don't, I want to treat like dry erase, but I don't want to just erase when my hand goes across them. They're perfect for that. Sharpie felt tip pens. Um, we have used a lot of the micro micron pens. But the problem is that Emily's favorite ones, which are this, they happen to be the same 0.4 millimeter. The, the tip keeps like going up into the pen. So I'm hoping that this brand will work as well as those, but won't break as frequently and they were a little more affordable and I was able to get four in the the thickness that she likes versus when you buy the assorted pack of the micron you only get um, the one of each thickness typically we will see uh, let's see I also grabbed this 12 count of retractable sharpie markers 
Um, the retractable ones I find so much easier. I don't have to worry about taking a cap off. And um, when we do archery, if we're shooting at paper targets, specifically when Emily's doing 4-H, she has to mark where she hit on the target. That way, if there's a bounce out, um, you would know exactly where it hit because your arrow wouldn't be in it, but there also wouldn't be a mark on the paper. And this is so much easier because you already have a quiver and a bow and you might be pulling arrows and being able to click with one hand and mark it and being able to have an assortment of colors so that when she gets out there on the field, she can say, oh, nobody's using pink. Um, I can just hand her a pink one. And it comes in this, you can't really tell, but there's like a little plastic large pin protector that they all come in. So I thought that was kind of cool, make it easier to store in our backpack. I also grabbed a new set. Um, we have used these markers, these exact ones for years. And some of the colors are finally drying up. So I grabbed a new set, um, a larger set this time, since I know how much we love them. I think instead of like the 80 count, this was 101. So it's alcohol markers. Um, it comes in this nice little case. I don't know if we'll keep it in the case or not. We really like our caddies. But what I like about this set versus other sets, is yes, they might dry out faster or run out faster in the, like the short term or long run. But a lot of the alcohol markers are like really fat markers. And Emily just doesn't like coloring with them because of that. And these are like a standard pen size. So they don't feel awkward in your hand. It still has the dual tip. So you still have a fine tip and then the broad tip. Um, it's just not, like I said, is like fat to hold in your hand. Uh, this is the Shuttle Art brand. Don't worry, I will link everything that you see in a link in the description. I also grabbed some new color pencils. We forever and ever and ever, with the exception of our like nature journals, have used the Crayola erasable ones because, well, they erase, but Emily was finally ready to replace those. So we are replacing them with 120 plus three. I don't know why we needed plus three, but these were 120 extra smooth, soft, um, break resistant. And I really also loved that it had the color on the end. So whichever way we stored them, you could tell what color they were. For now, they will live in this, but probably not long-term, they'll probably live in our caddy. I also grabbed some more of my favorite post-it tabs because I use these for everything from bookmarks to um, marking our place in curriculum to when I'm planning a unit study, I'll mark all the different pages I wanna reference. I, I use them for everything. And I also grabbed Emily some new magnetic bookmarks. I don't really wanna open the whole thing. I managed to find cat magnetic bookmarks. It's like, I think 30 of them. So she will love those. That's gonna be part of her um, first day of school gift. We do one of those every year to kind of kick off our school year. Um, also, we are trying a new math curriculum this year. I will share more of that later, but I grabbed the calculator that they recommend for her to use. Uh, for pre-algebra. I also got, happened to be a pack of 12 just because that's the way it came. These smaller um, steno notebooks, they're I think six by nine. And my plan is to try a to-do list for Emily every day. I don't know whether I'm gonna write it for her. I may start writing it for her so she can see what it looks like. And then her writing it kind of based off of my plans. Like these are the homeschool plans that you have. These are the chores I would like you to do today. Unfortunately, maybe it's just me, but I feel like when we reach this whole like tween age, their brains become mashed potatoes or Swiss cheese and things fall through them. So I want her to have something she can mark off to like know that she's getting the things done because things that I thought we had made habits that I wasn't gonna need to remind her of anymore, I'm finding myself reminding her of again like I had two years ago. So my solution is hopefully going to be a to-do list and these Sino notepads every day. Um, I'll let you guys know how that goes. And then I grabbed her, this will also be part of her back to school first day gift, a ton. I mean, there's like 600 in here. Um, I'm gonna dump them on my table. I just put them in a box that I already had, but it's like 600 cute 
animal stickers. Um, I thought she could decorate her own, you know, little to-do steno notepad with them on any composition notebooks or anything else. It would just be something fun that she can personalize her things with. Let's see, speaking of composition notebooks, I grabbed a couple, three packs of composition notebooks. I'm actually going to be teaching um, a co-op class that will be doing quite a bit of writing. So I got a couple of these so that I can give them some. And then I grabbed this because I think we will see. My plan was that this is what I'm gonna use to organize my co-op class because we're doing 12 units and there's 12 of these little like tabbed folders that has um, a clear thing on this side and then a clear thing on the back side. So that would give me the ability to sort through all of them. Then there also happens to be a notepad in the back and a little pen holder. So I'm hoping that it's gonna be a convenient way to organize any loose papers that I need for each of the weeks, as well as keep whatever notes and pen and not have to worry about needing a bunch of stuff. That's my plan anyway. Moving on from school supplies into kind of resources. One of our favorite things from the past, I don't know, four or five years as a math supplement has been the Mathological Liar. And they're like these cases where you have to solve them because one of them is lying and they're lying because the math is bad. Um, I think there's four people typically trying to defend themselves. Emily loves them. They come in grade level. So I think sixth grade was the last time that we were able to buy them because that's the last grade that they make. And I was looking for something similar to that because she really, really enjoys them. And Emily is not a huge fan of math. So anything that she enjoys and is willing to do, I'm all about. And I found this two truths and one lie. It's for sixth, seventh and eighth grade. Um, it says it's 101 daily activities. We won't do them daily. Uh, typically, Kevin does a STEAM like lesson with Emily once a week, and that's when they were doing Mathological Liar. I don't know whether they'll do multiple of these or not, but basically what it is, is there's three kind of problems, if you will, on each page, and two are true, and one is a lie. And so you're trying to figure out by solving them which of the three statements below is the lie. And it's even split into a sixth grade section, a seventh grade section, and an eighth grade section, if that's important to you to know like, okay, we're only gonna do the sixth grade section this year and then we'll save the seventh grade section and then the eighth grade. We're just gonna work our way through it. Technically I'm losing seventh, so six should be a review. But again, anything that makes math fun, I'm all about. So that's what we're gonna do for that. I also grabbed the seventh grade BrainQuest Smart Trivia Card Deck. Um, we really enjoy these in our morning basket, which doesn't happen in the morning anymore, but it's just a fun way to kind of review a whole bunch of different skills and also open the door to things that maybe we haven't learned yet or um, talked about and see what Emily may or may not be interested in. I thought these would be a fun addition to our morning time as well. They are SAT vocabulary word teasers. Um, it, ha like, it just tells you to draw a card from the box, but there's like a question and the definition of the word is on the back of that card. So for example, the question on one is, is there ever a good reason to prevaricate? Which looks like I'm gonna need to know that because I don't even know what that word is. Um, and then on the back, it gives you the pronunciation, its function, like it's a verb, its definition, and then a synonym for that word. So this will be a fun way for us to do some vocabulary, quick, easy, low hassle. Uh, for writing this year, um, I really wanted to focus on helping Emily through the stages of writing like a novel because she has started a lot of different books and she hasn't finished them um, because I don't think she knows how to. So I grabbed a few books to help me guide her better. Um, I have the Brave the Page, which is by Nano. Rimo, I think is how you say it. We're going to go with that, um, which is a like November monthly writing program that we have done in the past. Um, I also got a young writer's handbook, Spill the Ink, and How to Write a Novel Before You Turn 13. I've briefly looked through these. All three of them look really good. Um, I will keep you guys updated on which one ends up working the best for her. 
uh, let's see, This Day in History for Kids. We did a similar book to this in our morning time last year. I thought it would last us multiple years. It did not because we loved it so much. So when I saw this one, I was like, yes, please. Um, cause it's by the history channel. It's a thousand and one remarkable moments and fascinating facts. And it's very similar to the one that we did last year. You just turn to the date and it has, um, you know, different ways to travel through time by each day. 1969, this day marks the internet's symbolic birth. Uh, 2007, Martin Strell finishes swimming the entire length of the Amazon river. And in 2020, Tony Fisher temporarily grabs a spot in the Guinness book of world records by building the largest functioning Rubik's cube. So that kind of gives you an idea of some of the different things. Again, they will be random. It will be fun, but I love the rabbit trails that we end up going down because of the things that we've talked about in here are in these types of books. Um, last year we did a pretty big exploration unit study and it used the DK exploration book kind of as a base. And we loved that book, like loved it. So I decided to pick up the others in that series for Emily just to kind of peruse at her will. So we have Inventors, which is incredible stories of the world's most ingenious inventions. Like I said, we just really liked the way it was set up. It was like a spread for each inventor or explorer. The illustrations were gorgeous. It was bite-sized information, but it wasn't like dumbed down. Um, and it was just really fun to look at. So I thought that would be kind of fun thing to add. Plus we have the um, STEM unit study that we could add to that one. And we have scientists, inspiring tales of the world's brightest scientific methods and artists, inspiring stories of their lives and their works. And here, this one's probably the prettiest in my opinion, because it's art. Okay, so I typically share with you guys what we're going to do in our homeschool on a quarterly basis because if I was to tell you everything I thought we were going to do right now, first of all, I don't know everything. Second of all, um, it could change because I try to follow Emily's interest and because of that, I don't know what we're going to be doing in March of this year. What I do know is that the co-op class that I'm teaching is a fairy tale based co-op class, so I have some resources for that. And then I know that we are going to be doing a decent sized American study in our homeschool that will be a mix of kind of traveling the states, um, an election study, um, American history, all of this I will tell you more about when I talk about our fall homeschool plans. Um, but this next set of stuff that I'm going to show you is kind of what I purchased knowing that those were going to be the first few things that we studied. So I grabbed the happily ever after Mad Libs for our fairy tale co-op. Um, this is more for me to read, to teach the kids than it is like, I'm not going to be reading it to them, but I grabbed lessons from Grimm, how to write fairy tales. And then I got a bunch of fractured fairy tales because I thought it would be really fun to like read the fairy tale have the classic version and then read some different fractured options to give them ideas before they try to write their own. So I have each of these books, um, believe me, Goldilocks rocks the story of the three bears told by baby bear. No lie pigs and their houses can fly the story of the three little pigs told by the wolf. Honestly, red riding hood was rotten. The story of little red riding hood as told by the wolf. For real, I paraded in my underpants, the story of the emperor's new clothes told by the emperor. Trust me, Hansel and Gretel are sweet. Obviously that's the story as told by the witch. So each of these, as you can tell, are from kind of like the villain's perspective. Trust me, Jack's beanstalk stinks. Seriously, Cinderella is so annoying. Seriously, Snow White was so forgetful. Frankly, I never wanted to kiss a boy. Really, Rapunzel needed a haircut. Frankly, I'd rather spin myself a new name. Truly, we both 
loved Beauty Dearly. Believe me, I never felt a pee. And no kidding, mermaids are a joke. And then for ones that were maybe not individual, I also grabbed um, this one, which is the Stinky Cheese Man and other fairly stupid tales. So it says Chicken Lickin', the Really Ugly Duckling, the Tortoise and the Hare, but like H A I R hair. Um, Cinder Rumple Stiltskin, Little Red Running Shorts, Jack's Bean Problem, and much, much more. So I thought those would just be a really fun way to introduce kind of another perspective um, for fairy tales. And then uh, Kevin will be helping me teach this co-op. And he, like I said, is the STEM science, technology, engineering, math. Like that's way more his thing. So I grabbed him this to do with the kids, which is the science of fairy tales. It is um, 25 classic tales through hands-on exper experiments. So for an example, um, let's see. We have Little Miss Muffet as the tail, and then Create Your Own Chemical Change, which is like um, the baking soda in a bottle with a balloon. Um, Goldilocks and the Three Bears as the story. And then um, Explore the Science, How Can a larger, bo larger Bowl of Porridge Cool Off Faster Than a Smaller Bowl of Porridge? And then they have like the science experiment that you're going to do to explore that. All right, I didn't get nearly as many books for our American study yet because I really need to shop, finish shopping our shelves a little bit more. I think I have some stored away somewhere. Um, what I did grab though is the United States of Mad Libs, United Tweets of America, and Only in America, The Weird and Wonderful. All right, now on this side of the table, I have most of the books that I purchased for the school year. The first kind of set of things that I grabbed were some graphic novel series for Emily. She's recently gotten into graphic novels and I wanted to kind of encourage that and let her know that I'm totally okay with her reading them. But I tried to find series so that she could get into them because she prefers series. So I grabbed Katie and the Cat Sitter, and I got the first three. I think there's four, but I only grabbed the first three of that one. Um, and then I grabbed the Animal Rescue Friends. Again, the first three in that series. Um, and then she's really into Warrior Cats, and I realized that they also have a graphic novel series. So I grabbed the first four of the Warrior Cats. And then I tried to pick a few topics in the science comics that I thought she would really like. So I have Birds of Prey, Dinosaurs, and Cats. And then um, I think these and maybe one of the other series I will actually give her as her back to school gift. Um, and then the others I will just like kind of slowly dish out shrew, whatever. I don't like give her all of the stuff back to school. I just have it all ready. Um, also something that she has been really into for a while is poetry. And she read, I think it was last year. It may have been school year before last. Um, a few books or that are verse in free verse, um, the crossover and otter. And she really liked them. And then I'm not sure that they did another one the following year in book club. So I specifically went searching for books written in free verse so that she could have a few of them because she really liked it. So I got Love That Dog, Starfish, The Canyon's Edge, and Alone. And if you are not sure what free verse is, I will show you an example. Basically the entire book, each chapter is a poem. Um, so that is Love Your Dog, this is Starfish. Uh, I will say 
that the free verse books, in Emily's opinion, when she did the two that she's done so far, um, she said it was much better to read with your eyes versus audio because the audio book just didn't do it justice with the free verse part. Uh, okay, speaking of book club, I like to buy the book club books for Emily so that I don't have to depend on the library having them in stock. Um, and that way, as soon as she's finished with one, I can hand her the next one and say, this is your next one. And she can just kind of read it at her leisure. I, she knows ahead of time when the book club dates are, and she knows she has to have it done by then. She has missed that a couple times. And luckily Mary is amazing and she still lets them participate in class. And she'll just tell the other kids don't spoil the ending, which they're really good about. Um, but I like her to just have them. That way I don't have to worry about it. I can say, here's your next one. And this is when the due date is. And I normally will put a sticky note on the front so she knows when that is and she doesn't forget. Um, this year, and keep in mind, I didn't pick these. Mary Hannah Wilson did. She is amazing at picking great literature for kids. The Last Map Maker. The False Prince. Mercy Suarez. Keepers of the Lost City. Good Different. Masterminds. The War That Saved My Life. The First State of Being. And The Mona Lisa Vanishes. Now, most of the time, Emily reads these independently. There are some times when I really want to read a book, and so we will read it aloud. I can tell you right now, The Mona Lisa Vanishes is at the top of my I want to read list, just from what I've seen so far, so that one we will probably read aloud. Um, I haven't looked into the others in depth enough to know whether I want to read them aloud or not. I also know that I want to read a lot and a lot is relative. I would like to read as much American based literature as possible during our American study. Um, and by that, I mean written by American authors, which I haven't picked those yet. Um, cause I'm actually hoping to do novel studies for those. I will keep you updated on that, but I did go ahead and pick up a good handful of kind of books that were set, um, either in America or, you know, like historical fiction type of books that I thought would be great during that study. I don't know that we will read all of these. I may give some to Emily to read independently. I may read some aloud, but I know that this time of year, a lot of people are getting their books to go along with their history. And I didn't want to have to deal with them being higher in price later or me not being able to get my hands on them. Um, and I was able to get a lot of these during the buy two, get one free sale. So I have Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry. I'm pretty sure this is one we will definitely read because it is the only book for my entire like public school education that I remember vividly. Like I remember, I don't know, I think it was my fifth or sixth grade teacher read it to us aloud and we would like put our heads down on the desk and she'd turn the lights off. It is one of my most fond memories. It may have been just being read aloud to, it may have been the book, I don't know, but I definitely wanted to do that one because of that. Um, Caddy Woodlawn, Across Five Aprils, Johnny Tremaine, The Witch of Blackbird Pond, Carry On Mr. Bodewitch, and then I also got Chains. Now this is a trilogy. I only got the first one because if we love it, then I'll get book two and three, um, which is Forge and Ashes. But I didn't want to get those in case we weren't a fan of um, the author's writing. We just haven't read anything by her yet. The Mostly True Adventures of Homer P. Fig. Gold Rush Girl and Miracles on Maple Hill. And kind of the last set of books that I purchased are, we're gonna just call them 
self-improvement books for Emily. Um, Become a Better Human. I don't know. But I wanted to add a book to our morning time that we could slowly make our way through. Um, last year, we ended up doing uh, like a health book and we did um, a couple different like uh, teenage survival skills and um, middle school critical thinking type of books. Um, we talked about money a little bit and those things ended up becoming like this, the bouncing board for so many amazing conversations. Um, and so many like habits forming and it, it just showed me that like, I want to do more of that with Emily as she gets older. So I tried to pick kind of like, like I said, self-improvement type of books that we could read together, that we could actually both get something out of. Um, so I have Just As You Are, which is a teen's guide to self-acceptance and lasting self-esteem. Eat That Frog, uh, 21 Great Ways to Stop Procrastinating and Get More Done in Less Time. I mean, I can use this now at 37. Uh, this one is how to win friends and influence people for teen girls. So the back says, this is kind of what sold me more than the title, the essential guide for a new generation of empowered, savvy, and confident young women. Raising a screen smart kid. Uh, let's see, that says embrace the good and avoid the bad in the digital age. Winning the war in your mind for teens. Change your thinking, change your life. And then the seven uh, habits of highly effective teens. I actually read just the original um, seven habits of highly effective teens. So I'm really a highly effective people. So I'm really excited to read this one with Emily um, and see what he pulled from that for the teenagers. Okay, last up we have games. Now this year when I purchased games, I purchased with three kind of categories in mind. One is that it kind of matched up with a study I knew we were gonna do um, for sure, which there's only two of those, I just talked about those. Two is that it was a two player game because I find that Emily and I need well, we just need more of those in our household in general because there are a lot of times when it's either just me and Emily or just Kevin and Emily. Um, and there's just only so many two player games we have. So I wanted to add some of those to our collection. Or the third one is that it was a game that would play in under 20 minutes, which I will explain why that was a huge category um, in just a minute. So let's go ahead and start with ones that I knew would work with a unit study. For our fairy tale study, I only grabbed two. This is a card game called Wacky Fables. And then I grabbed the roll a tail um, fairy tale dice. So you just roll the dice, look at the pictures, tell a tale. I thought these would both kind of be really great, quick icebreaker type of games to go along with when we're doing the fairy tales at co op. Um, just, you know, something to get them, you know, doing things together or talking out loud with the roll tell I'm probably going to have them add on to stories instead of just telling them all night, like each kid roll a dice and, or two dice and continue the story. So that way it's kind of a cooperative game. Um, and then I told you we're going to be doing a United States study. We already have quite a few games to go with that, but I did grab the top Trump's, um, bundle, which included top Trump's the United States. Uh, top Trump's the U.S. President, and then Top Trump's Washington, D.C. Um, honestly, these are the two I wanted, the United States and the President's, but it was cheaper to get all three, and I figured it wouldn't hurt to have Washington, D.C. Maybe we'll play it anyway. Uh, rolling America. It is like an American-themed um, dice rolling game by Game Right. The 50 States a Trivia Game. The 50 States a Bingo Game. I just like the illustrations on this one. And then the newer 10 Days in the USA. 
This is a remake of an amazing classic. I cannot wait to play it because I loved the original like 10 days in America or Africa games. Um, and then I got the Scout It Out, which is the ultimate guessing board game with maps, facts, and fun. So those are the ones that I got with the intention of going along with a unit study, hopefully. Um, and then the two player games that I grabbed, I didn't get a ton. I just wanted to add to the collection that we already have. So I grabbed um, Brave Rats, which is a duel of clashing clans. Um, I'm going to say Quill. I don't know how to pronounce this. Um, but it is this gorgeous game um, where each player takes different stones and you're stacking them. And I did get the mini version because eventually I'm going to run out of room for games. So I wanted the smaller one possible. Um, I did the same thing with Porto, which is by the same company. I grabbed the mini version. Um, it's another one where you are kind of moving and stacking the pieces. Um, donuts. It is a tasty and tactical clash for two players. And then this is one Emily got for her birthday, um, but I had it on my list for back to school two player games. It is Boop. It is so adorable. Um, based off of what we've read so far, it is a very thinky game for two clever cats, but basically you're playing on like this big bed and every time you place a kitten, um, it boops the other ones one space away from it. And then after you get three kittens in a row, you upgrade to a cat and whoever gets three cats in a row wins. I think that's very basic. Um, we read the back of the box, but it's cats. It was a two player game. Like I knew Emily was absolutely going to love it. So she can't wait to play that one. I just, like she literally got it for her birthday two days ago and I stole it and said, let me put this in the video and then you can have it. Okay. The last category, like I told you, is games that play in under 20 minutes. And I will do a whole video on this because I've already dissected our entire game shelf and pulled games that play in under 20 minutes, which is how I knew how many more I wanted to add. Um, and the reason I want games that play in under 20 minutes is because as a mom of a tween, we are home less now than ever before. Um, and when we are home, I swear, I feel like we were going in a hundred different directions because typically I'm like, um, let me run Emily to karate. And Kevin's like, oh, I'm going to stay home and cook dinner so that when you guys get home, we can eat at 10 o'clock at night. Um, and we're just like, it's, it's like that all the time. One of us is running out the door with her while the other of us is either working or, it's just, it's been an adjustment um, to this lifestyle. And I'm not complaining because I love the season that we're in right now. It just means we need some adjustments. And one of those adjustments is that I want to have quicker play games so that there's not ever a time when we can't play a game. Like, oh, we only have 15 or 20 minutes. I now have a whole stack or in this case drawer or whatever of games that we can just immediately pull from. The other idea that we had, um, and I'll share more about this too, is that we are going to make a list of all of the games that we have that play in under 20 minutes. And somehow based off of that list, we're going to randomly pick a number, roll a dice, um, spin a spinner, pick a piece of paper. I'm not sure exactly yet. And, um, that is the game we're gonna play after dinner. It won't be every night after dinner because on karate nights, we're already not eating until 10 o'clock and getting to bed at like 11 or 12. We don't have 15 or 20 extra minutes that night. But most nights, like before we go do dishes and kind of all go our separate way for the rest of the evening, we can set aside 15 to 20 minutes and end our day connecting as a family with a game. We already play a game at dinner, like a trivia game why not just have one more snuck in there? That's my plan anyway. Again, I promise to do an updated video with all of those details. In the meantime, here are the games that I bought that I sourced that should play in under 20 minutes, but we need to play them before I add them to that list. Marvel Mayhem. I do actually know this one will play in under 20 minutes because we already have the Dungeons and Dragon version of this game. 
um, and Emily got the Marble Mayhem for her birthday. So this one I do know for sure will play quickly. It's a lot of fun. We love the other versions, which is why she added this one to her list. King's Gold. According to the box, it's going to play in 15 minutes. Exploding Minions. This was another one Emily got for her birthday. According to the box, it's going to play in 15 minutes. Couch Kittens. Birthday game for Emily. Um, it will play, it's a two-player game as well, and it will play in five to ten minutes. So this one could be a quick play or a two-player game. It goes both ways. Let's see. Lucky Dogs. Five to fifteen minutes. It is just a dice rolling game. So right up Kevin's Alley. This one is Timeline Twist. It says it will play in 20 minutes. We will see. But I think if it doesn't, it can be modified to make work. No thanks, the card game. Uh, let's see. This one says it will play in 20 minutes. Sequence Dice. It claims 15 minutes. Adds Monday Wild Ones. So if you've been watching any of my game school videos, you know we love the original of this. And this just kind of takes it up a notch. So now it's like fractions and decimals um, for a nine plus. It's like bigger numbers, money. It would be the next step up. And the original As Monday does play pretty quickly. And I think this one will too. They say 15 minutes. I would say that's probably about accurate. Spots. This is a, another dice rolling dog game. It says 30 minutes on here, but I have high hopes that with less players, it might go faster. So we'll see. Skip bow. It doesn't have a time on it, so we have to test that one. Ghost Blitz 2. Sorry, this is Ghost Blitz 2. Um, it says 20 to 30 minutes, but I think with less players, it would play faster. And I think we can even um, modify it that we would need less cards to win so that we can make it faster too. And anything that I modify in whatever list I end up making, I would write like the modifications that I made to make it faster on there so that I know every time we play it, like, oh, we're only going to collect four cards to win instead of six or whatever modification I might make. Museum Suspects, it says 20 minutes. Ticket to Ride New York is 10 to 15 because it's a smaller game board. So it is still all of the same Ticket to Ride fun, but New York and London are the two that have a smaller game board so that gameplay is quicker. Like this is the whole game board for New York. And um, while I like New York and London, I figured since we were possibly doing America, New York made more sense for us. If we love it, then I will add London to the collection as well. Uh, world, word Roll. It is basically a Yahtzee style version. Actually, it's like Yahtzee and Scrabble mixed um, because you end up with like dice that you're trying to roll and you have these cards that increase the points and you have points on the letters on the dice. So you're trying to make the larger point word. Um, it says that it will play in 20 minutes. And you guys know Kevin loves Yahtzee. So anything that rolls dice, I'm always trying to add to our collection for him. Um, we love the game ecosystem and it does play in roughly 20 minutes. So I'm hoping these two do as well. This is ecosystem coral reef and ecosystem savannah. And even if they don't, then I'll just move these over to the science section of our game school because that's where ecosystem is and it's amazing. Um, and then this is Strike, the Harry Potter version. So we have the original Strike, which we love. Um, and then there's another like element impact. It's a very similar gameplay. They just don't call it Strike. We really like that as well and I thought um, we could add the Harry Potter version because, well, it's Harry Potter. And I think my plan is for games that are almost the same gameplay but different theme, 
is that I would put like strike and in parentheses list the three that we have so we could pick which of those three we wanted to play that night or that time. That's my thought process anyway. Um, like I said, I will update you when I actually finish playing through all of these and when I make the list um, and how we're gonna go about it. But my plan is that we will have some way to have quick play games and not pull the same one over and over and over because we are really bad about that. Like we're really bad about, oh, uh, we'll just use this one for example. See what dice is out. We just played it last night. It's on the table. We'll just play it again. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but we have so many amazing games that we just out of sight, out of mind or whatever. So I want a better system. Um, I want them kind of all in one place. So I may either make a whole shelf of them. I may clean out a drawer in this and put them all in there, but I want some sort of system for games that we can quickly play. And hopefully that will help us even when we're short on time, get in more gameplay which is one of my goals for this school year. So that's everything that I purchased with our seventh grade homeschool year in mind. That doesn't mean that I won't get more stuff because obviously I don't know what unit studies we're doing for the rest of the year. Um, I have no idea about holiday studies yet. Uh, so I'll obviously be getting stuff from that. And then books, I'm sure that she'll have more interest. And so I'll purchase her more books for whatever her interests are. I'm sure we'll be adding more games, but for the most part, me being intentional with this upcoming homeschool year. This is what I purchased, hoping that we would have a great year full of connection um, with, you know, lots of reading, lots of fun, hands-on and games. Because to be honest with you, hands-on fun middle school stuff is becoming more and more difficult to find. So I'm having to really think outside the box to source and make sure that I'm still keeping all of that on hand for her because I don't want to see our homeschool take a turn for drill and kill. I've worked way too hard to keep it away from that. Um, so I'm really trying to prioritize connection and fun and all of the things that we've done for all these years. And so this is the things that I purchased with that in mind for seventh grader.